Hi, I'm Bob Hudson. In this video, we're going to look at some relics of World War II, specifically pieces of Japanese aircraft such as the famous or infamous Zero. These war souvenirs were brought home by a gentleman from Chicago who served as a B-24 bomber crewman in the Pacific. Based on what I know about his service in the Army Air Force, I would say he most likely picked up these and some other souvenirs in the Philippines. At first glance, and second glance, and even third glance, it's hard to tell what these are besides crunched up bits of aluminum. Luckily, there is still paint on a couple of these pieces, and that can point us to their origins. The dark green square is very thin, what you would expect for the exterior skin of a Japanese warplane. The reddish brown matches what is used on propellers and propeller spinners, at least on some aircraft, including Zeros. There is another paint that matters, one that's on the reverse side of the dark green square. It's called Aotake, and I'll get to that one in a minute. When I saw that reddish paint, my first thought was this must be a section of the fuselage where one of the red meatballs was painted. But the color didn't look quite right. The wrong U, the wrong shade, not bright enough. I realized, too, that this piece was very thick, about two millimeters, almost three times as thick as the green fuselage skin. There are two of these thick pieces, but one of them has no paint on it. However, the reddish-brown paint on the one piece, the thickness of both pieces, and the curves and bends on them make me think that these are indeed sections of the spinner or propeller. And obviously, they crashed hard. I wonder if it crashed hard enough to, in effect, shake the paint off the prop. As you can see, there's apparently a lot of the reddish paint missing, and it does not look like it was burned off. The paint job is a little unusual in that it has a thick base coat, and it looks like the base coat is not very well attached to the aluminum, not bonded. I knocked off a small piece of it with my fingernail just handling it. Again, did most of it come loose from the force of impact, shattered like a piece of glass? Before we talk about the green paint, I should give you an idea of the size of these things. Some of them are just a couple of inches long, and most of them have sharp edges, especially those uh, thick pieces like that. Now, you can call these relics or fragments or just plain old pieces. Contrast these with intact fuselage items taken from aircraft that had a, well, better last landing. Here's one such piece I picked up a couple of years ago. It's from a Japanese Betty aircraft, and it's in great condition with much less chance of cutting your fingers on it. The dark green square has a backside also painted green or kind of green or bluish green or greenish yellow or blue. Something. Welcome to the world of Aotake, an anti-corrosion coating used to paint the insides of Japanese Navy aircraft. In researching this video, I discovered there's a lot of debate in the model building community about what colors really were used on Japanese aircraft for the Army and Navy, and which manufacturers used which colors during which time periods. Some say that each manufacturer had their own shades of Aotake, but others point out that there have been aircraft that had several shades of Aotake inside them, Aviation artist Ron Cole has a wonderful summary of Aotake's color changes. He writes, The coloring that was added to Aotake did not have a specific standardized formula. Contrary to popular belief, while it could most often be described as blue-green in appearance, it was very often more green than blue, more blue than green, yellow-green, or everything in between. Furthermore, all of these shades could be encountered within the framework of, a same, of the same individual aircraft, often adjacent or overlapping each other. The reason for this is because Aotake was applied to individual pieces, large and small panels and braces, before they were assembled. The various components were coated by various subcontractors, and even within subcontractors, different batches of Aotake were of different shades. When these thousands of parts were assembled, the end result was very much a dazzling patchwork of bright colors. Check out Mr. Cole's site in the link below. And for those of you watching YouTube on a smart TV, I do realize there's no comments below or subscribe button to the right or left or anything like that. For you, try roncole.net. Let me say right now that paint colors for Japanese aircraft of World War II is a hotbed of debate, and no doubt I've already made mistakes in this video, which is why I'm going to quote one Mr. Cameron Lynch, who says, If you're looking for a single definitive source for the colors and markings of Japanese aircraft during the Second World War, you're out of luck. There simply isn't one. Notice the two thick pieces also have traces of what must be Aotake on maybe both sides. Was the Aotake the reason the base coat did not bond well with the metal? Let's look at some of the other pieces now. This one is very thin, even thinner than the fuselage skin. It is a longitudinal stringer that's attached to the backside of the thin aluminum skin, especially in the wings. I have colored in some of the stringers in this drawing of an aircraft wing. The stringer I found has a small clip, probably used to hold an electrical cable. This last piece is, well, I don't know what it is. It's two pieces of aluminum bar stock welded at a slight angle, 
And if you run your fingers down the center of each piece on each side, you can feel the little bumpiness from the welding. They did an okay job of smoothing it down. But again, no idea what it's used for. It's about one millimeter thick, half the thickness of those propeller spinner parts, and thicker than the fuselage skin. Thank you for watching, and now please kindly manipulate the subscription button somewhere around here, over there, over there, over there, whatever. I'm Krusty Bob, over and out.